Welcome to the tutorial video on Unity 2D Basics. In this video, I'm going to talk about physics and forces. So to start, I have an empty new project I've created within Unity. This is a 2D project that I've created and has nothing else going on. So to start, let's review how Unity has things laid out in the default manner. So to start over here on the left hand side, we see our scene view. This would show us whatever is currently in our scene. Underneath that, to the bottom, is our game view. If we were currently in play mode, we would see different things, depending on what was in our scene. Moving to the right, we see next to game, project view. This shows us all of our current files and folders and how we've organized things. Moving up then, we have our hierarchy view, whatever is currently within our scene in its hierarchy, which things are parents and which things are children. And then finally, to the far right here, we have in our specter view. Whenever we're looking at something in a hierarchy view, when we click on it, we get access to whatever its details are and often the ability to change its settings. So I'm creating a new 2D project. So what I need to do then is add a sprite to this project. In the hierarchy view, I'm going to click on create, go down to 2D objects, and then sprite. So a sprite game object within Unity is just an abstract way to handle different operations that concern images. Usually within programming terminology and especially game design terminology, a sprite is sim simply some type of image data that is drawn to the screen. Often sprites, especially in a 2D context, are things the player controls or the player interacts with in some way. Usually we think of them as, for example, Mario and 2D Mario games is a sprite, a collection of image data that is drawn to the screen but that the player also controls. So let's continue with that line of thought. We have a new game object, a new sprite, literally it's called new sprite for us, but it doesn't have any image data associated with it. Right now, select within a hierarchy view, we see over in the inspector view, it has a number of different options. We can change its position, its rotation, its scale, color, materials, and everything else. But it doesn't have a sprite associated with this sprite game object. And notice, in fact, if I put the mouse over this sprite, it says the sprite to render, but it says none. So we have the sprite, but it needs image data associated with it, which means we need to import a new asset to this project, a new image, and associate that image with this sprite game object because we want to then manipulate that image data on the screen in some way. So because I'm adding a new asset, I need to import it. So from the upper left hand menu, I'm going to assets because we're going to work with an asset down to import new asset. Now I've already prepared a single image for this. So I'm going to select this player image I've created and then import. So this is a simple image I've created. It's 32 pixels by 32 pixels. I could have chosen anything else, but I wanted a very basic image to get us started with. So notice it added it down here in the project view. So we have our player image right here, and notice it gives you preview within the project view, and because it's selected, a preview over here in the inspector view as well. So it has a number of different options, sprite modes, pixels per unit, everything else. Right now, I'm going to leave all of those alone and just accept whatever default values Unity assumed for me. So coming back over here to new sprite, I'm going to select it within the hierarchy view. So we need to associate this image data, this image I've pulled into my project, with this sprite game object. And so the sprite game object can be associated with the image and whatever additional settings and materials we associate with that. So what I'm going to do is, while new sprite is selected within the hierarchy view, click and drag sprite, this player sprite, up into sprite render, er, and for the sprite option, click it. And so now the image data associated with this image player from the project view was click and dragged over into the sprite renderer for the new sprite game object. Notice once I did that, it was added to the screen because now this sprite game object has an image associated with it. It has some image data it's going to draw. Which it, once it knows what to draw, it starts drawing it for us automatically. And notice we see that down here in the game view. So we have our little sprite associated with this right here.
Well, I, right now, new spray is not a particularly useful name, so I'm going to rename this. So in the hierarchy view, with new spray collected, uh, selected, I'm going to right click and then go to rename. I want to name this player. And I press enter and I've renamed this game object. So whenever we got a game object selected, we can always change its settings and its different options. I could have also, instead of changing the name through a right click, selected it from the hierarchy view, over here in the inspector view, also changed it as well. For example, player 2, and would have also changed it. And I just want this to be player, and I've changed it over here. Two different options for changing the game object name. So okay, I've got a sprite game object added to the screen. I've got it associated with image data, which means it's drawing it, which we see down here in the game view, right here going on. Well, now I want to actually do something with it. So let's finally get around to actually talking about physics and forces. So within Unity, especially within 2D, to move things around, there are a number of different options. The very basic and most common is to give something a body. This is a physics body. Once it has a physics body, we can apply different forces to it and have it react in different ways. One of the ways to add a physics body and one of the types of bodies we're going to deal with is a rigid body. This is a body that does not change. Once it's set, that's what it's set to. So it's rigid, that is, it does not change, and it is a physics body which allows us to do different physics things to it. So with the player game object, which is our sprite game object, selected within the hierarchy view, move over to the inspector view and go down to add component. Whenever we want to add things to a particular game object, in Unity this is the approach we take. We select it from the hierarchy view, move over to the inspector view, and then click on add component. Well, I mentioned that we want to do something with physics. So I'm going to scroll down to physics 2D, and then I'm going to scroll down a little bit more, and I'm going to select rigid body 2D. Well, so now I've selected a rigid body 2D, so this is a physics body, which means we can enact physics things to it, and it's rigid, which means it does not change, and it's set to the shape of whatever is associated with. So in this case, a rigid body has the exact body shape of the game object we've associated with, which in this case is a sprite, and a sprite is associated with some image data of an image, so it is a rectangle associated with that rigid body. Now, I mentioned materials a couple of times in passing. Especially in the newer versions of Unity, starting in 2019, Unity particularly cares with how we do things with materials. Now, materials are a way of defining the interaction between different things. So we need to actually create now a new physics material 2D to associate with this rigid body because it's then going to describe how two different things relate to each other. So to start that, let's come down to assets and clean this up a little bit. So we've got our project view, but then we've got scenes, which contains our current sample scene, and then we've got some image data. Let's clean this up a bit. So in project view, I'm going to create folder and call this images. Then I'm going to drag player into images. So now we have our images and we have our player. And now with assets selected, I'm going to create folder and call this materials. So now we have an image folder, which has our current player in it, and our materials folder, which we're going to add now too. So with materials selected, I'm going to create down here, physics material 2D. And it added it to that folder. And it gave us a default name, which I'm just going to accept for now. And I'm going to select it, and then over in the inspector view where it says friction, I'm going to turn this down by setting this to zero. So what I've defined now is a new physics material which defines the physics relationship between two different things and I've set its friction to zero. That is when these two different things interact there will be no friction to them. This is not as helpful in this video as we talk about physics and forces but as we build on these ideas we want to be able to describe how things relate to each other and one of the ways we can do that by defining the material of these two different objects 
and then Unity will know what to do with that math as they collide with each other. So I've got our new Physics 2D material, and I'm going to come back over to Player. So similar how I dragged the image data and associate it with the sprite renderer, now we're going to drag new physics material 2D out of the materials folder and associate with the material of the rigid body 2D. Drag it over, associate with it. So now we have our image data associated with the sprite renderer and we have a new physics material 2D, which doesn't do anything but currently have no friction, that we've associated with the material for the rigid body 2D. So we've got these two different things associated, image data and physics material 2D with the 2D with the rigid body and the player image data with the sprite renderer. Well, that's a lot of upfront work. Now let's finally start to talk about code. So we've got these two different things uh, set here, but now we want to react when the player presses some buttons. We want to actually do something with our player game object. We want to move it in some way. So to do that, we have to actually write some behavioral scripts for that. So similar how we added the rigid body 2D, we're going to add a new game component. We're going to do that through having player selected within the hierarchy, coming over to the inspector view, coming down to add component. This time, I'm going to scroll to the very bottom and click on new script. I am going to call this if I get my stuff corrected here player script. Go create and add. So just like I've added this new file here. I'm going to this time clean this up again within assets, create, folder, this time call it scripts, and I'm going to drag in new behavioral scripts into scripts. And so we see now we've got the script file within our scripts folder, we have our scenes within our scenes, our materials within our team, materials, and our images within our images. Now I'm going to rename this to player script. And I'm going to double click on it. This will open up Visual Studio and allow us to change the C-sharp code. Now normally we would rename the file when I created it. But this time we're going to rename it within this. So it named itself new behavioral script, which I don't want. So I'm going to call this behave player script. so that its game, its game object matches the name of the file. Player script, player script. So when we're looking at a new behavioral script within Unity, it gives us two existing methods. The first is start, which it helpfully tells us in a comment that is called before the first frame update, and update, which is called once per frame. So this allows us to start to think about the relationship of how things are drawn versus when we want to do physics. So we have here an example of a behavioral script within a game object in these two different methods. So start will be called when it's very first created or it's very first found within the project. And then update will be called once per frame. That is when it's drawn each time, it will be called update each time. So if we want to start to interact with things, we probably want to use update. But we need to establish what we're interacting with first. So I added a rigid body 2D for this project. So to interact with that body, to apply forces to it, we need a reference to it as part of this game object. So we need a reference to, from the game object, its components, because the rigid body is a component within the game object. So to do that, we need to start to give it an initial variable that's going to save that reference. So rigid body 2d is a type and I'm going to call this rd 2d and I'm going to make this private to this object 
The difference between public and private, especially as it applies to you game scripts on Unity game objects, is that if it's private, it's private to that object, which means nothing else can access it. If it's public, that means that Unity can also access it because it has can get into that game object to change its values. This has become a little more important as we move forward, but I wanted to note this right now. We have our private rigid body 2D, which is the type, and then we have our variable RD2D, which is going to contain in just a moment a reference to the rigid body component for this game object. So the first thing we want to do then is within start, when it's very first kicked off, is to get that reference to that component. So RD2D is equal to get component rigid body 2D. So the very first thing that's happening, we're saying, hey, for this game object, go look at its components and find the component that is a rigid body 2D and save a reference to that because we're going to need it. So the very first thing that happens, we say, okay, within its components, go look for the rigid body 2D and save it. And we remember moving back over to Unity Editor. I'm going to select on player, give it just a moment to catch up to me. That it has a rigid body 2D. And we added a component. So say, okay, for this game object, go get the rigid body 2D because we're going to use it for something. So I'm going to move back over to Visual Studio. So we know our game object has a rigid body 2D and we want to save a reference to it. Well, Every project created within Unity has some default calls it called input access or accesses. So what we're going to do then is to show you what those are. I'm going to move back over to Unity for a second and then we're going to move back into Visual Studio to actually write that code. So just to show you what those are, let's go to edit and then down here to project settings and I've got input selected and then axes and then horizontal. So the horizontal input axis, which is the default for Unity projects, has a name of horizontal and is associated with the left and the right, that is negative and positive arrow keys, as well as A and D, as well as any motion from all joysticks on its own x-axis. So this means if we get this value, this default input value, we can either press A or D for negative and positive or left and right arrow keys for negative and positive or left or right on any motion from any joysticks on their x-axis. So this gives us a wider range of different options by just looking at this one thing. So we've got our input, our axes, and horizontal. And it's also true of vertical, works the same way, down and up, S and W, and the X axis, X axis uh, up and down. So all of that is to say that we have these default inputs we can use that's part of all Unity projects that then we can then ask for and allow a player to use either WASD to move up, left, down, and right, or use the arrow keys, or any existing controllers that are also connected to the computer when they play. So, what we want to do then is we want to actually get that input. So, it's returned float values, so we want float, I'll call this Haas movement is equal to input, and I mentioned so, input, get axes, and now we need the name, it's horizontal. We do the same thing for vertical. Vert movement is equal to input, get axes, vertical. So similar to how we got the component as part of this game object for rigid body 2D, now we're saying, okay, from the default input, for this project, get the access, get the access, matching that name, and we've already covered those are default values that are part of this project that are either WASD or the arrow keys or any input from any controllers that are currently connected to this computer that Unity can detect. So 
we've got these two different values, these two different float values, and we want to do something with them. So let's finally actually apply some physics here. So we've got our RD2D, so let's do that again. This time we want to add force. Force takes a new vector, so let's say a new vector 2, so two values, and call this horizontal movement and vert movement, and in that line. So each update, we're saying, okay, for the default input, if there are any values associated with horizontal, which we know is WASD or the arrow keys or whatever, save that as horizontal movement. If there are any values associated with the axis vertical, save those values, then apply them, add force to RD2D. So I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna do Control S as a keyboard shortcut to save this. Then I'm gonna move over to Unity and I'm gonna click play and give it just a moment to catch up to me. Oh no, what just happened? Our little sprite just fell right off the screen. Well, the sprite fell off the screen because gravity was applied to it. So as soon as the game started, physics kicked in and gravity kicked in and it fell right off the screen. So to help this a little bit, I'm going to click on player. And then I'm going to come down to rigid body 2D and I'm going to look for gravity scale. So notice if I put the cursor where it says how much gravity affects this body. We can have negative numbers, which means we'd be dragged to the top, or positive numbers, which means we're dragged to the bottom. Or we can just have zero. So no gravity is applied whatsoever. So let's play this again. Okay, nothing else is going on. No gravity is affected. Now if I use the arrows, we start to move. And physics is applied through force to this game object. In this case, I'm using WASD, and I'm using D, and we're moving. And now I counteract that force to the left. We can move up, and we can move down. Now you may be wondering why we're floating around. Well, we're floating around because there is no friction. I mentioned that we needed the materials, and I set the initial friction to zero. So it means there's no slowing down. Once we start moving, we keep moving as long as force exists. And force will continue to exist because it's not colliding with anything and it's also have no friction. So it's basically on ice, sort of. As we just move around and force continues to get applied over time, over time, and we just drift in the endless void of this little area. So let's start to fix that problem. So we know that materials describe the friction, the friction. So I'm going to down to materials and we'll change our friction to 0 0.2. And let's play with that and see what that looks like for us. Well, no, nah, we're slowing down a little bit, but it's not a whole lot. Well, we're still kind of in the void and we're not colliding with anything. So the friction is not really applying to anything, but we know it's there, so that helps us. So, okay, we've got a sprite that we've added to this project. We associated with image data with the sprite game object. Then we associated a rigid body component with it. For the rigid body component, we then created in the materials a new physics material 2D and associated that with the rigid body. So we have our image data associated with the sprite and for its rigid body 2D, which we added through a component, we have a new physics material 2D associated with that. Then we created a new script, which we called player script, and we added some code. Within that code, we 
had a reference to the rigid body, then we used get component to get that component from the current game object, save that reference within the start method, so the very first time saving that re reference, then each update we looked at input get axis. And then I looked at how within the project settings, Uni has a default axis described as horizontal and vertical, which are either WASD or the arrow keys or the input from any X asset X axis from any controllers associated with it. And this, this gives us a really quick shorthand of looking at horizontal and vertical. And they return float values, so that's what we have. Then we apply those forces, the new vector of horizontal movement and vertical movement, to this game object using its rigid body every frame. Well, we've finally got physics and forces. To close this video out, let's do one more thing. Let's collide some things. Let's come back over to Unity. Within our hierarchy view, let's now add another sprite. I'm going to click on Create, 2D Object, Sprite. I'm going to rename this sprite Floor. Notice this time I used the Inspector view and changed the name there. So we want to collide things, so floor won't be moving, so it doesn't need a rigid body, but it does need something to draw. So down here in images, I'm going to select, I'm going to right click, I'm going to create, I'm going to go to sprites, and I'm going to click on square. So instead of importing a new asset, I'm going to allow Unity to create one for me. In this case, it created a simple square with a simple color and did nothing else. So we just have a square we can use. So in floor, I'm going to select it again within the hierarchy view, and this time I'm going to drag square to sprite. And so now we have, associated with this, a white sprite associated with this game object. Over here in the scene view, I'm going to select it and move it down. And I'm going to expand it out. So it is underneath our current player game object. Because this is a floor, and so floor has to be underneath the current plane object. Okay, so now we have a pretty basic sprite shape underneath this and we have our existing player sprite above that, drawn slightly above that. So we want to collide these. There's a number of different ways to do colliders within Unity. For this video and especially for this project, we're going to approach this using a box collider. A box collider is more or less what its name implies. It is a box that describes the collider. So a collider is basically a way of describing how things relate to each other when they come into contact, when they intersect. A box collider describes a box. And so when things collide, when they intersect on the screen, it is their two boxes which intersect. So we can add a box collider the same way we added a rigid body and a script to any game object. That is through adding components. So with the player game object selected within a hierarchy view, I'm going to go over to the inspector view, just like we've done before. Go down to add component, physics 2D, and then box collider 2D. Now notice that box collider 2D also needs a material. So let's just reuse the material we've been using. And I'm going to drag from materials, our material over to new physics 2D for the box collider as well. Then for the floor, I'm going to select it from the hierarchy view. Over in the inspector view, add component, physics 2D, box collider 2D. And I'm going to drag the new physics material over and associate with the box collider 2D as well. In more complex projects, we probably want to think of the different materials and create different versions of them so we could describe their friction and bounciness in different ways. For example, if the player was colliding with maybe grass, there'd be a little bit of bounce to it maybe. Or if they're colliding with hard concrete, there'd be no bounce. 
and maybe be a lot of friction. And so using different materials allow us to, again, describe these relationships between different things. But for this project, we have a simple uh, physics material that has a tiny bit of friction to it. So when things collide, that force is uh, slowly negated over time. So we've described our box collider 2D for our floor game object and added a box collider 2D to our player object. Now, I did not add a rigid body 2D to the floor game object. I mentioned because it's not going to move. This also means we don't have to worry about gravity either or changing in those values. So let's play and just see what happens. I've jumped into play mode. And we notice that we can move around, but I can't pass through. I can press S all I want. I can't pass through this object. The reason why I can't pass through it is because it has a box collider and so does my player game object. Both of these has a, have a box collider and by default, two things that each have a box collider cannot pass through each other. So now we've defined a floor here. We can move down and we're stopped by the floor. So this is our use of our box collider and its default settings, that they are collide. We're describing a box around our player game object and a box around our floor game object. And they collide with each other. So I'm gonna come out of play mode and change one more thing. So now that we have a floor, we should probably start to care about gravity. So within the player game object selected within the hierarchy view, I'm gonna move over to the inspector view down here in gravity scale. Let's change it to one. Now let's play. And notice immediately gravity took effect as soon as the game took effect. Our player game object had a gravity applied to it and it immediately moved down to the floor and now we can start to move around a tiny bit. Now notice we're not moving very quickly now. Our position is terribly slow movement. So we wanna change that. Well, one of the ways we can change that is applying a multiplier to whatever the current axis input is. So I didn't cover it, but the current axis input is usually between negative one and one. That is full negative movement and full positive movement. That's not very big. And we're applying that maybe one pixel movement force to our sprite. So it's not moving very fast. So what we wanna then do is apply a multiplier to that. So let's do that by moving over to Visual Studio where we currently have our player script pulled up. And we're going to add a multiplier called speed. I want this to be a public variable float called speed. And down here, I'm going to multiply the horizontal movement and the vertical movement by speed. Now, I've created this as a public variable because I don't want to set the value in the script itself. I want to set the value within Unity. So I've created a public variable float called speed, and I'm gonna move back over to Unity. I'm gonna give Unity just a moment to catch up to the changes I just made, and it refreshed. And now notice within the script object, player script component, of the, notice the player script component of the player game object. We now have a new option called speed. So let's change this to um, five to start. And let's play. As soon as the game starts, gravity is going to take effect. And now with a multiplier, we move a whole lot faster. A and D allow us to move across our floor. Yay! <laughs> so let's review everything I've covered in this video because there's a whole lot of stuff. And this is just the basics of Unity 2D. There's a lot of other options we could have gone with.
So the first thing we did when I created this created this project is created a new sprite. We did that through in the hierarchy view going to create 2D object and sprite. The next thing we did after that is I pulled in a new asset. The asset I pulled in was an existing image data that I had already created. Once I had done that, I reorganized assets and we associated that image data with the sprite renderer for the sprite game object, which meant that it would draw it to the screen. Then I talked about how we wanted to apply physics, and we did that through, a, through creating a new component, rigid body 2D, for the game object we wanted to actually move, we wanted to apply force to. Then we created a new material, a new physics material 2D, and I noted that especially in Unity 2019, it cares a little more about materials, and we want to make sure we have those associated with our game objects. After that, we went in and we changed the code by adding a new script and getting a variable rd2d, which is a rigid body 2d. We used within the start method get component rigid body 2d to get the component as associated with this game object. We save that reference and then with an update we talked about input and get access horizontal and vertical. Those are the default for project settings. Then we applied that force, whatever those values were, either negative one or one, to our RD2D, which is our rigid body 2D, applying horizontal and vertical movement. Back over in Unity, we noticed we could move around, but we were just sort of drifting in a void. So we added another game object, Floor, which was another sprite, And then we talked about how we needed to collide these. And so one of the approaches we used was a box collider, which describes a box around whatever it is and deals with when two things intersect, when they collide with each other. We talked a little bit more about materials. So materials, again, are associated with box colliders and with rigid bodies. And we added a box collider 2D to our floor game object. We added a box collider 2D to our player game object, and then we saw when we play, if they collide, they do not pass through each other. So collision, when they were to intersect, they don't instead. And then finally, we changed the gravity on player so it is pulled to the floor, and then we noticed that once it's colliding with something, that we wanted to add a little more oomph to it. So we added a multiplier speed within the code speed that is public, then we multiplied speed to the get access input values, and so there was an additional movement, uh, horizontal and vertical, and it's public, so we could adjust that value within Unity itself, because all public values allow us to edit the values within Unity, and that's where we finally stopped. So we've done a number of different things in this video, dealt with two different game objects, how they relate to each other, dealt with materials, and then start to think about these physics and forces using rigid body 2D in a 2D game environment to apply forces, using box collider as a way to collide to prevent things from intersecting within a 2D game project within Unity. Thanks for watching.